Hello, Pastor Ed here. It's the day after Good Friday, so therefore it's Saturday. And the interesting thing, uh, we have all kinds of names for days. Uh, we have Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday. But what do we call today? Well, for me growing up Catholic, we always called it Holy Saturday. Uh, through tradition and uh, there's other names that were given to it as I looked it up. It's also been called Joyous Saturday, Glorious Saturday, and some people called it even the Saturday of Light. I've seen a couple emails and things that I get from other pastors or other writings that uh, some people like calling it Silent Saturday. And that kind of has a neat tone to it. I get it. It's kind of the, the silent day in between uh, these two other big days. Uh, it, it's kind of neat. I think the one writer said, perhaps... Good Friday and Easter Sunday are the most writ written about days. And then here's this Saturday in the middle, probably the least amount writ wrote about. In the Bible, there's very little written about it. And we'll get into that. I'm going to propose a little spoiler alert here that I'm going to call it Sabbath Saturday. But we'll get to that in a minute. But the question is, what is Jesus doing on the Saturday after Good Friday, the Saturday before Easter. Well, there's been a lot of debate about this. And in the big picture, all does it really matter? But in the picture of that, we like to have things that to discuss about. Uh, and whether you think it's a big thing or not, it's actually put into the Apostles' Creed. And some people think that maybe it should not have been put to it. So I'm going to see if I can um, show it to you here. If you have a hymnal, which, you know, who's had a hymnal at home other than a pastor, of course. Uh, I'm referring to 881 and 882, and I'll see if I can get it up on the screen here in a simple manner. You can see 881. Look at it there, and then I'm going to read it to you. In 881, it says, you know, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, got it, born of the Virgin Mary, got it, suffered under Pontius Pilate, got it. Here's where the controversy comes in. Was crucified, dead, and buried. And if you can see there real closely, there's an asterisk by the word buried. So we go down to the bottom whenever there's an asterisk. And it says, the traditional use of this creed includes the words, he descended into hell. Now, for a lot of people, that creates a theological problem or at least a theological discussion. Um, and then it goes into, on the third day, he rose from the dead. Now, 882, if you see it there, 882, where's that, well, it adds a line to it. 882 is called the Apostles' Creed Ecumenical Version. So that says, uh, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, is the very same, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried, like the previous version. But this version doesn't have an asterisk. It actually writes into it. And perhaps this is the version you grew up in or used to. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. Now, the other version, there's that tricky word, uh, how do they um, interpret this one word? Some people call it Hades. Some people call it the dead. Some people called it hell. I believe the King James called it hell. And that's where some of this came from. And then I think modern scholars said, no, that's Hades. And then they're defining what is Hades? Is Hades just the afterlife? Or is Hades actually um, hell in a sense? But uh, let's just, let's go to the one part of the Bible that's also fueling that whole discussion. Because, like, where did that come from? There's one verse in the Bible, I believe, that I know of, that speaks to this. And we're not even sure if it actually speaks to it. But um, here it is. It's in this passage of 1 Peter in chapter 3. The verses are from 18 to 20 that calls it. But the interesting thing, the passage is called, if I can get up here again, called the whole passage of this whole chapter is called suffering for doing good so that's the point of this pat of this paragraph and even be the verse before it in verse 17 it says 
talking about suffering for doing good, which we get. That's, you know, what we do. It's, it's what God did. And I think that's what he's getting to. It's the example that Jesus set up for us. So in verse 17, Peter's saying, it is better. It is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Well, that makes sense. Now, here's where it gets tricky. But again, he was setting this next part up. But this next part's where you get this whole part of what did Jesus do on Saturday? And it's strange that it gets put in the air, but maybe we give it too much attention because it is only one verse. But Peter says in verse 18, For Christ died for sins once for all. Got it? No problem. The righteous for the unrighteous. Got it? We get that. That's good. To bring you to God. Got it? That's good. Now here's where it gets a little funny. He was put to death in the body. Got it? Good. But was made alive by the Spirit. Got it? Good. Through whom he also went and preached to the spirits in prison. Who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. So here it's saying the Spirit made him alive. The Holy Spirit. And then it's saying the, he also went and preached to the spirits to the spirits, a lowercase s, the spirits in prison. So that's kind of where all that comes from. And, um, you know, we'll leave that to other people. I would say, you know, this is one of those discussions is, if you can't fall asleep at night, maybe study that. But as we conclude, I'd like to talk about the whole idea of, let's call it Sabbath Saturday. And I know that to our expert people out there, you're saying, Pastor Ed, that's redundant. Sabbath Saturday because Sabbath is the Saturday and I understand that um, but I'm actually calling it that because to serve as a reminder as to what the Sabbath is the Sabbath day is the seventh day it's set aside by God as a day of rest and it's made holy by God um, if we look at the words uh, sacred or in the Ten Commandments to keep the Lord's day holy and that's what, it's sacred. It's meant to be kept separate from the other days. And God said back in Genesis, you know, you work six days and you rest on the seventh. God rested on the seventh. Not that he needed to. He was setting the example for us that we needed to have time of rest and we needed to have time to have a sacred, something separate. And that where we could study and learn of God and be with God. Now, back in the Jewish people's time, um, they were getting very legalistic on what it meant to keep the Sabbath. Uh, people were working and you say, well, you're not supposed to work. You're supposed to rest. And they made up all these laws about what is work and what is not. And it gets to the point where they actually accuse Jesus, who in uh, Mark chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, heals somebody on the Sabbath, the Saturday. And they get up and they accuse him, oh, you're working, Jesus. You know, you can't be holy. You would know not to work on the Sabbath. And Jesus says, whoa, just cool out. Calm down. You are so caught up in your laws, you're missing the greatest law of all, the law of love. You love the Lord your God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. Love. And Jesus explains to him, he says, hey, the Sabbath, you priest, are you not working on the Sabbath? Well, yeah, they are. Do pastors work on, the, or on Sunday? But say, yes, yes, we do. But he's saying that is an act of spiritual service, whether it's in worship or whether it's in service to God. It's not a violation of the Sabbath. And so through him healing this person, he's saying to them, it's okay because Jesus is now saying the Sabbath is a day of rest, but let us not, but let us also remember that it's a day of to heal and to restore. Again, the example that Jesus gave us in Mark chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. And isn't that exactly what Jesus is doing here in between Good Friday and Easter Sunday on this, say it with me, Sabbath Saturday. He's taking a day to heal us from our sins. He's taking a day to restore us back to himself he's doing exactly what he should be doing on the sabbath even in after his death his physical death jesus is still the way i see it honoring the sabbath 
So as we conclude today, as we get ready for Easter tomorrow, in this time when we need healing, in this time where we need to be restored, let us remember that this is the Sabbath Saturday. And that is what the Sabbath was for. It's for healing and it's for restoration. Happy Sabbath Saturday to you. God bless.